Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and welcome to the new release of Lies of P. If you're just jumping in or about to, maybe you're midway for a playthrough, there's going to be a bunch of things that you probably wish you knew. Things pertaining to the early acts of 1, 2, 3 and 4. I'm shocked by the amount of people that have made a mistake we're going to talk about at the start of this video to do with boss weapons. For example, I'm standing next to this vendor right here and he sells you the unique boss weapons using the unique ergos. There are many things you want to know and mistakes you won't want to make, so here's 10 things you want to know in those early chapters. So as far as things that happen in the early acts of 1, 2, 3, and 4, this one's a later one in Act 4, but you want to know about it as soon as possible. Throughout the game, you're going to find Ergo, and you can consume these, as you can see, to get plus amounts of Ergo. But then there's Rare Ergo, Parade Leaders, Broken Hero, King's Flame. These provide way more Ergo when you consume them, 5,000. But as the description says, it says a treasure hunter may want this Rare Ergo. Apparently, this description's just not descriptive enough for a lot of people. I've seen a shocking amount of comments about this on YouTube videos or Reddits. I even had a friend message me saying, hey, you should mention this because I fucked up. Which is crazy to me because all of the Soulsborne series and many Souls likes do this thing where they have boss souls and you use them for boss weapon. And it's back here and that's what it's for. So do not consume them unless you're certain you don't want to use that particular ergo for a weapon. And in this fourth chapter, you will meet this character here that actually begins selling them in trade for those items. And it's not just weapons that he sells, right? There's also amulets. Enables dodging even when low stamina, increases weapon attack in proportion to the amount of fable slots, there's a build. Upon a successful perfect guard, temporarily increase the damage you deal with a weapon attack. That is insane. So these are some incredible items and some very potent unique boss weapons, which actually, interestingly, cannot be altered in any way. Like, obviously, we can take the head off a weapon or the handle of a weapon and modify things. These weapons are just inherently them. You won't be able to change them, but they are very unique and very cool, and they come with some potent fable arts. You'll need to meet Alidoro the Hound, though. To do that, you need to reach Chapter 4, reaching the cathedral of that section. Via the library stargazer, once you make it to that, you're going to need to follow these tunnels around to the stairs that lead you up, and then that brings you to this room with the K-Water. In that water on the left is a crack in the wall we pass through, and on the other end of this water is another stairwell leading up. The top of here is a room with a mini-boss waiting for you, so just ignore that and go straight up the elevator. When we get to the top, we have this incredible view, and Alidoro here as well. At this point, you can have a conversation with a guy and let him know that there's a safe place to send him which is Hotel Krat. Once you tell him that he will show up in Hotel Krat and he'll have his own quest line and more boss stuff to trade with. Though you can speak with him now and trade with him to see what stock he has at this time. Next up it's time to talk mini bosses because they come with important items that you're going to want. These mini bosses come in different shapes and sizes but usually pertain a theme of the area. You'll bump into them as they patrol or defend a spot. They might even be standing in front of a chest you want to loot. Many of them will be quite in your face and hard to avoid. All of these guys drop something you want, even if it's just a consumable, even if it's just a high ergo. You could compare them to the Black Knights of Dark Souls 1 though, because they often drop valuable items, items you'll want to equip. It could even drop amulets that are potent, like increasing your weight cap and more. Interestingly, some of these mini bosses will drop items that actually are relevant to the final boss of that chapter and will make it easier. If I go to my equipment section, you can see that we have four defense parts to pick from. You have the starting frame and then you have the various items you're going to find by opening chests and defeating mini bosses and taking their items. These increase your physical damage reduction and different status protections as well, so they can be very useful outside of the amulets, which can be insane. So to say the least, Every time you find a mini boss, you need to kill them. They won't respawn, you kill them once and you get the good stuff, whatever the, the reward is. It might even be weapons. In Act 3, you're going to fight a bunch of these like robots with shovels that have incredible items, so they're strongly worth defeating specifically. But on that note, let's move to a specific mini boss that I want to highlight, found in Chapter 3, right before the final boss of that chapter. In this main green room with the vats and all this acidic aura, is one of those mini bosses circling the middle of the room. Do not ignore that. That one. You want to specifically defeat that one because it's going to provide you with that piece of equipment that's going to help you with the following boss. That piece of equipment will be this radiation converter. And as you can see, it has really high fire damage reduction rate. The final chapter boss of Act 3 is a fire enemy. And for a lot of people, it's apparently a wall, a really tough fight. So having extra fire resistance 
probably gonna make that fight a lot easier. So specifically that mini boss, I really recommend you hunt it down. But in general, again, hunt mini bosses always, always kill them. They might give you something that is very good. Speaking of bosses though, did you know there's entirely optional bosses in Liza P? Bosses that drop valuables like a Radiant Ergo Junk for the P organ. One perfect example of that would also be found in Act 3, which is the Puppet of the Future, which is kind of hard to miss. Right at the start of Act 3, you're going to bump into this guy as he patrols a small section where it's covered in this horrible corruption goop on the ground. An absolute nightmare fight and entirely optional if you are fighting in the goop. However, it is possible to progress this area and eventually you'll find this lever that lowers the water and gets rid of the corruption, making it so you're not slowed and now this fight is a lot more doable. Again, it's completely optional. You do not have to do this fight, but it is worth it. It provides a lot of ergo and items that you're going to want. Also, it's a really easy fight like once you get rid of the corruption water and you can move normally it's pretty much avoid the stomp on either leg by moving to the other leg that's not stomping or when he does the double stomp just move out and if he ever 360s it's free dps because you just stand right under him and smack him it is truly a really easy fight but yeah a highlight of totally optional actual bosses not just mini bosses that can be found in liza p if you ever come across one there may be a mechanic that's going on that makes the fight a lot easier if you deal with it first so i'd recommend it but now you know they exist Next up, let's talk about the interesting cosmetics, the outfits and accessories that you can get for different costumes. Obviously, you start with this one, but you can find the iconic outfit, for example, of all the trailers that we see Pinocchio actually wearing. But of course, there's an absolute pile of them that actually have different effects and different information. For example, if you're wearing the Blue Bloods tailcoat, there's an NPC in Act 3 where you get it that mistakes you as a character called Leo and you get some interesting dialogue and backstory towards that character. That optional boss is called the Survivor, and you can get their outfit too, including the helmet. It is interesting to know that the description actually has relevance to interactions you'll have with NPCs though, beyond just a form of collectible that you'll hunt down. To find the Blue Bloods tailcoat though, the iconic outfit, you get it in Act 3. Before you even enter the factory, on the right is a phone that's ringing, and if you go over and speak to it, you'll be given a riddle. The answer to the riddle is basically humans, and in exchange, you'll be given a key. You'll find these ringing phones all over the game, and they will give you keys. They're often tied to awesome rewards, including a final costume called the Alchemist cape worth the effort for just that fashion anyway this first key is the trinity key and you need to find the secret door that's within the workshop once you're actually in the factory and have wormed your way through you'll find the door that you need the trinity key for but with it in hand you can just go in and open the safe that's in there and yeah you'll get your blue bloods tailcoat we can get cosmetics and costumes in other methods but this is going to be a relevant one and now you know about the riddles and the phones you can hunt them down Another thing you're going to find in this game is the gestures as another collectible. It can be interesting and maybe serve some purposes. For example, there was one NPC that needed me to use the Stalker's Promise emote for them to actually give me a key to progress the game. But one of the first gestures you'll find is the Remembrance gesture found in Chapter 2. If you head to the Stargazer inside the house on Illusion Boulevard, then turn back to run across the roof where there was a chest and hopefully a defeated miniboss you beat earlier, there's a secret room on the right here leading to a letter on the side that is just a frozen man letter. If you actually open that up and read it, read all of it, it'll unlock this gesture. There will be various gestures and different ways to collect them throughout the game, but now you know they exist and you can hunt them down and they might have some purposes in different interactions with NPCs. Lastly, when it comes to collectibles, there is an entire tab dedicated to collectibles. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different ones. If you're trying to actually 100% the game, then you want to collect these, but there are some actual functions to these. In any case, we have recollections, records, which you can go and play in the hotel crap, by the way. There's books, newspapers, notes, pictures, letters, documents, and a cryptic vessel as well. They're hidden around the world and in different areas as you progress the game. For example, this note is found in the rafters in the area right before the the final chapter three boss so if you are someone who enjoys you know actually getting 100 percent and getting all the collectibles maybe using the records to get some humanity through that method this should be a strong way to encourage you to really explore next what about side quests these are worth knowing about and doing in liza p especially early on they'll also reward a variety of collectibles sure but also ergo fragments to help you level up faster there's gesture rewards and even most importantly p organ materials involved so they're worth doing one of the first ones you'll find is early on in chapter two near the stargazer inside the house on Leishan boulevard as well progress forward on from there and eventually you find the courtyard where there's a mini boss that actually drops a baton weapon if you defeat it but on the window in this area is an npc you can talk to who basically asks you to find her missing baby the next stargazer you'll find Krat city hall and progressing forward from that you'll eventually come 
come to this intersection here, where if you turn right before you actually enter the hall, you'll find this half-broken puppet brawler in the way of an item on the ground. Defeat him and go loot the item, and that's actually the puppet baby she's looking for. So we can take that back to the woman in the window. At that point, though, you have to lie to her and say, the baby's cute, and then you'll get the rewards. This is probably going to be the first record you'll get, which, as I've said, you can play at the hotel for certain progression. That's just one of the first side quests you'll do and how to solve it. Be aware you'll see icons and NPCs when you are looking to fast travel, knowing that you can go back somewhere and go interact with someone, and maybe progress a side quest. Number eight, I'm just going to highlight some weapons that you'll find around the world. We can collect them by defeating mini bosses, by buying them from merchants, by finding them in safes and chests all over the place. For example, in chapter 2, we can get that baton from the mini boss that I mentioned near the Weeping Woman. Or the weapon at the end of chapter 3, the one in the mine area. All the way at the top of the mine, you'll find the big pipe weapon. Or, yeah, the awesome booster glaive found in the chest behind the puppet of the future in that horrible pool of corruption. Which, you know, you can run to that chest and loot it without fighting the boss and moving on. So, there's going to be weapons to find throughout the world. There's going to be different ways you get them. But now, hopefully, you're aware of how you find them. For the last two things for the video, though, I want to highlight the Legion arms and how you actually increase your collection and how you get more after a certain point. To get more arms, it's quite straightforward initially. You start with the left arm of steel, no problem. And the second arm is the puppet string, which once you get to Hotel Krat, you just get by talking to Eugene. But then we have the full minis here, which is kind of an electric weapon. This is found at the end of Chapter 2 when you defeat the main boss, the Scrap Watchman. After that, you go speak with Eugene and you'll get the next arm. Then the last one that you're going to be able to get is the flame burge which requires you to defeat the chapter three final boss then instead of speaking with eugene after you do that you speak with the man that you saved in the factory and now you have access to this machine that crafts and changes your legion arms at that point though it kind of stops you no longer get them by defeating bosses so how do you get more you're going to need these the legion plugs there's only four to be found in the game and they are used to craft the remaining four arms but what's cool at this point is you can use these plugs to craft whatever arm you actually one of the remaining arms you don't have yet. So you're going to need four plugs, and they're found at various points in the game. The earliest one you'll find, though, is actually in Chapter 4, at the Cathedral. In the first main area, you come across these rotating machines and ladders leading up, and if you climb all the way to the top, you'll find a lever to pull, and right next to that, actually, are these platforms we can drop down onto. If you carefully drop down just one or two levels and turn around, you'll spot this enemy standing in an alcove. Jump down and kill that enemy and the one behind that too, and you'll see that they were standing next to a chest. Within that chest is the first plug you'll be able to get for your fifth legion arm. Again, at this point, you can just go back to the hub, craft whichever of the remaining arms you don't have yet using this plug, which is nice because we can get the last ones in the order we want to. But there you have it. That is my guide to some of the main aspects and mechanics you want to be aware of and on the lookout for, and with some little guides to help you get started. This does cover our early game of the chapters one through four, but there's a lot more to consider, so we might come back for future chapters and more advice videos soon. For now, though, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.